Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike at Favorin's RV Center. Here to congratulate you on the purchase of your Flagstaff Superlake 526 RLWS fifth wheel. You guys have picked a beautiful unit here. I'm going to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at your campsite. Because our hitch man is going to show you how to undo your hitching. One thing I will show you on that is up here you do have a docking light. And then your landing landing leg control, up or down. Of course, you just pull this out, drop these down, and then this will control bringing your legs up and down. A couple things I want you to take into consideration when you park, your slides. Make sure you got enough room for your slides to open. And where your water and electricity hookup are. Your water is gonna be toward the front of your unit, on your off camp side or your driver's side of your tow vehicle and your power is going to be all the way at the rear on your off camp side or your driver's side so park accordingly so that you can utilize their facilities and if we've got our level unhooked our unit unhooked next thing we're going to do is level our unit You'll level your unit using these landing legs. But then we're going to stabilize our unit by coming to the rear here. GPS 2, stabilizing. Now as I bring these stabilizer jacks down, one thing I do want to recommend is jack pads. That's going to take these stabilizing jack feet and protect them uh, from dirt, debris, different things on the ground, uh, hot blacktop. Let's sink into it. So it'll better distribute the weight. You want them feet to get down flat. You can feet are fat and your unit starts to move at all. That's all you want is them taunt. So once them are taunt, we've got our unit level. Got our unit stable. While I'm bringing this up, and I'm talking about those jack pads again. Remember you do have a 10% off coupon for our store. So any other items that I mentioned, you might want to use pick them up in our store. So we've got our unit level, got our unit stable. Next thing we're gonna do is hook up our water and electricity. Coming to the back of the unit. Here's your electricity. Now this is the new Furion turn to lock. So to unlock it, you turn it this way and pull it out to lock. Go back in. Turn this and then turn your black. Now you do have 50 amp service here. Should you need to plug into 30, which most campsites have, you have this dog bone to bring you from 50 down to 30. And should you need to plug in at home, you also have a 30 amp down to 110 adapter that comes in your convenience pack. Just remember when running off that 110, you don't want to run your second AC unit. Come around to the back of your unit now. We're going to go ahead and hook up our water. Offside campsite, you have your docking station. All right, so we're in our docking station here. I'm going to go ahead and move this spray port. So you can see what's going on. So we do have several different hookups, and all of your instructions are right here. So let's say we're hooking up to city water, which are most campsites. You can put your white down, your green to the left, red up, blue left. White over, 
green to the left, red up, blue over. So we're matching that. So once our city water connect is turned to where we need it to be, first thing you can do is hook up your water pressure regulator. Water rush pressure regulator is going to reduce your water pressure to 40 to 50 psi, protecting the lines in your unit. So every time you put water in your unit, you want to use your water pressure regulator. Hook up the city water. Before hooking it up, or before turning your water on, you're going to come right here to your right, to your hot water heater. Open up your hot water heater and return your drain plug. You may have had this out the last time you were camping, draining your unit. So return your drain plug in, then you can turn on your water. Once your water's been on for a few minutes, you're going to pull on this pressure release valve. It's going to let air out, air out, and then a steady flow of water. Once you know that's flowing out good, you know that your hot water heater is full and you can light it from indoors. There is a on-off switch down here. Keep it off unless you're running on 110. If you're running on 110, turn on your hot water heater from out here. That's the only time you'll use this. Now, should you be using potable water, if you're going dry camping somewhere, we're gonna go ahead and hook it up to dry camping. White down, green up, red up, and blue over. So once we've hooked that up to potable water, dry camping, we're gonna come over here and fill our potable water tank. Do the same thing, fill it up, and then burp your hot water heater. However, after you do that, is when you're gonna to wanna to turn on your water pump. Only turn on your water pump if you're using potable water. Other ways to set up as well on here, sanitizing unit, winterizing. Got our water hooked up, our electricity hooked up. I'm gonna walk you around the unit, show you a few other things. First, starting in here, your cable and satellite hookup. Again, this spray port. Over here is your black tank flush. We'll talk about that when emptying our tanks. And then your water pump. This hose conveniently stores right up there. There's a, when you run your water line, you can run your hose down through there. Here to the left you have your propane tank. Right of that, an outdoor docking light. This is the, the back of your heat release for your furnace. So if you're using your furnace, stay away from that. It gets rather warm. There's a potable water fill. Potable water, hot water heater. Down underneath here. Here's your sewer outlet. Right up underneath here is your low point drain. Fresh water drain. Just that little white one right up in there. There's a manual override for your fly. Your big storage rack here. This unit is prepped for a Furion backup camera. You also have Steps to go up and check the seams of your roof. The power stabilizing jacks. You do have an LP connect here if you do want to grill outside. To the right of that, you do have in your slide a mount for a TV, porch light, a couple of outdoor speakers, another manual override for your slide. And should you want to put a TV out here, 110 and cable hookup. And then these black pieces are access to the back of your fridge. There are your solid steps and your storage. So that covers everything on the outside. Let's go take a look on the inside. So as you come up your steps, first thing you're going to notice in your entry doorway is your fire extinguisher. Make sure everyone knows that the fire extinguisher is by the entry doorway in case of an emergency. As you walk in the unit, to your upper right is your control panel. Let's go over quite a few things on this. Start up here by checking your tanks. Your gray tank, your black tank, your fresh tank, and your battery can all be checked here by pressing buttons. To the right, Turning on your water heater, if you're plugged into electric, you turn this one on. If you're just using gas, turn this one on. 
So that's your water pump that you use when using potable water. There's a tank heater, should you be in inclement weather. There's a pad on your tank, I believe. Here are your three slides. These two toward the front are both going to be your living room, and then this will be your bedroom. Over here is your awning. It's raining out right now. Uh, otherwise, I would extend your awning to show you how far to bring it out. Just bring it out until the awning flap on the end drops down to 90 degrees, and then you know you're all far enough. Coming in over here, interior lights, porch lights, awning lights, step light, and Wi-Fi booster. Turn that on whenever you're at a park. It's almost like you're right next to their Wi-Fi system. To the right of that is your thermostat. Control the mode. Go through it. Different systems. Change the system to cool, to heat. To off, cool to heat to off. Down below that, more interior lighting. Down below that, this is an access panel to your fuse box and breaker box. Now it looks like you've got 30s, 15s, a 20. Got a variety in there. I recommend getting a handful of those from our store and taking them with you, having fuses on hand with you. And also, as soon as you come in the doorway, is a 110 with GFCI protection. You do have, oh, one more switch up here at the very top. That is going to be for your fan light. You can control the light in the fan motor by the chains that are on it. Coming around your kitchen real quick. Max Air, remote control. For this max air unit down here to open it to turn it on it'll circulate the air really well through here all through the unit you do have this one touch led lighting 110 back here in the corner coming to your stove this glass makes an excellent backsplash you do have an electric igniter turn this to light hit ignite when your gas is on You'll have fire. It's already been tested. Let's have your gas off at the moment. Same thing over here. Turn to pilot on. Do you want to keep an eye on your plumbing? Underneath your sinks, your toilet. Maintain it just like you do at home. And around the unit here, do you have another 110 here? This is your gas grill that mounts on the outdoor grill. Lip out there. Your dining, which does have an extension. So this will pull out. Let's talk about your entertainment center in the lower right hand corner. This is your 12 volt carbon dioxide detector. The reason I mention this 12 volt is because it's constantly running off your battery. So if you're going to be gone for the day, disconnect the battery. If you're not plugged in, if you're plugged in, you're fine because that's charging your battery. Another 110 here. Your sharp sound system. AM, FM, Bluetooth, DVD player, everything in this IRV technologies. These are the different zones you can play it in. Your sharp TV with sound bar. There's your remotes for everything. I'll talk to you about your beautiful fireplace real quick. Oh, this will only run when plugged into 110. There we go. So, they're not just for looks anymore. I can change the different colors of the flames and all that. But what you want to do is when it's cold, a little chilly on an autumn or spring evening or morning, instead of using your gas, turn on your electricity driven fireplace and heat it up in here in no time. These will really kick out a lot of heat. Another 110 here. Your individual lighting here. And if you haven't seen, make sure I had to set up your sofa into a bed. Real quick system. Velcro backs. Just remove your Velcro. Move your cushions. I found the easiest way to do this is to stand in the middle because you do get 
better leverage. Lift it up, bring your legs out. Pull up towards you. Lift down, and just that quick, you got your bed. Reverse the process to put it away. Lift it back up first. Stand in the middle. Bring your legs in. Back and knife it back down. And return your cushions. These all help with velcro back so they stay right where they're going to go. Quick and easy. Let's talk about your Dometic fridge. Turn it on. Right now it is set to auto. Auto means that when you're plugged in it's running off electricity. When you unplug it's running off gas. If you want to run just gas, lift that button. Coming up the hallway step. Don't forget, maintain the plumbing. Keep an eye on that. We have another remote controlled max air vent in here. You should have, yep. Under the sink here, a 110 with GFCI protection. Coming into your bedroom. I'm going to turn the light on right there. A couple things to note in here your 12 volt and USB charging ports. I also want to mention that this vent is already prepped for an AC unit. So if you ever decide after a summer or two of being back here, if you want better AC, you can put a second unit in here. Over on the wall, this is prepped for a backup camera. Cable and satellite hookups in 110. And your antenna. All the way to the right when traveling. Excuse me, rotate to the left for travel. When you arrive at the campsite, lift it up. Like rotating to the right. Speaking of your antenna, let's go back to your TV real quick. All this pulls out. On your cable hookup, what you're going to do is when you arrive at the campsite, you're going to push this button, and that's the digital channeling boost booster. So it's going to allow you to pick up more digital channels. All right, that about covers the inside. A couple things I want you to take into note. Make sure when you are closing your slides, you have nothing impeding this area up here in the bedroom. Same thing in the living room. Make sure you don't have anything out. Make sure that these drawers or doors are closed. Last thing you want to do is have that slide catch some doors and rip them off. Same thing over here. So just make sure you have everything closed when closing up the unit. Now let's go outside. Real quick, I'm going to explain these steps to you. These are strut assisted step above. They lift up, and as you see, because they're strut assisted, they're actually floating in the air right now. So they're easy to do. You do have adjustable feet here. All you're going to want to do, I like to lift it to here, shake it, shake dirt off, set it up into the door, close your exterior door, lift and bring this over, deadbolt your door. Every time you're leaving to hit the road, deadbolt your door. Last thing you want is your door coming open. So now, get ready to leave campsite. We will have had the slides all closed. What we're going to do is we're going to find some low point drains. We're going to drain all of our water out. You can do this right at the campsite because it's usually cleaner waters. If you know you're going the night before, dump them that evening if you're not going to use them. First low point drain is going to be right up here. This red and blue. We're going to open them up. And then you have one more behind your tires. This white one right here. So we're going to drain those 
Then we're going to come to our hot water heater. And we're going to pull, open up our drain valve to drain our hot water heater. After we've drained all of our waters, now we're going to dump our tanks. Go ahead and head up to the dump station. Sewage hose that comes in your convenience pack. We'll hook up right here. First thing you can do is you're going to pull your black tank. That's going to be your handle on the right. After your black tank is ran for a little while, leave it open. Come up here to your black tank flush. Again, we're going to use our water pressure regulator because we're putting water in the unit and we want to protect our lines. Hook up the hose at the dump station. Run this black tank flush for about five minutes. It's going to wash out your black tank. Let it get a good washing. Shut off your water. Remove the hose. Close your black line. Then you're going to pull your gray tank. After you pulled your gray tank, that's going to be your cleaner waters, your showers, your sinks, and that's going to clean your hose out for you. After that point, you're going to come to the back of your unit and open up your bumper and conveniently store your sewage hose in there. Again, we thank you for choosing trade winds. We hope you enjoy this trailer for many years to come. And happy camping.